College life is strange, frustrating, and overwhelming at times, but the word I'd use to best describe it is definitely strange. I'm in my second year of college now. There wasn't anything particularly interesting or captivating about the first year. To me, it felt like high school except you had to feed and discipline yourself. For an unmotivated guy like me, it was terrible. I'm only really in college because of the fear I have of disappointing my parents, even though I don't really know what I would do without college, or what I plan to do after I'm done. I lived in a residence building first year and made some friends, who then went on to rent a house with for the second year. I live with five others. It's a nice place considering the state of some of the other student housing I've seen. The town in which I go to college is really old as are some of the houses in the area. The one I live in was built sometime at the end of the 19th century, but was recently remodeled with students in mind. The only things left that show the house's age are the fireplace in the basement, which was sealed up years ago, and the radiator heating system around the house. When me and my friends first moved in, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I settled into my room rather quickly and got acquainted with the space. My mother made a big deal out of me going to live on my own, crying about how her baby boy was all grown up. My father, on the other hand, grinned and told me to make the best of my time. That was the last time I'd see them for a few months, and after what's been happening, I wish I could see them now. My room is on the third floor of the house. I live next to Matt, who also lives upstairs. We share a bathroom. The walls between our rooms are fairly thin, and we can easily hear what the other is doing in their room, whether that's music or friends. Everything seemed to be going well in our house. At first. At the beginning, I didn't notice much, but every now and then, when I'd try to go to sleep, I could hear some kind of scratching on the ceiling or walls. I very quickly dismissed it as being a squirrel or bird scurrying around. What really started to bother me was the whispering. It was low, and I couldn't understand what was being said, but I realized that what I was hearing was definitely someone whispering. It also sounded muffled, which is why I figured it was Matt whispering in the next room to someone on Skype and trying to keep quiet so he wouldn't wake me up. Everything unraveled when I put a hole in my bedroom wall, and to this day, I wish I never would have seen what was behind it. I'm really into video games, especially MOBAs like League. While not motivated in terms of school, I'm very competitive and tend to get intense. After losing a hard-fought game of League, I stood up from my computer chair and tossed my phone at the wall beside my bed. I didn't mean to damage the wall, if anything, I figured my phone would break before it did, but I forgot how durable the case I had on it was, and instead of bouncing off the wall, my phone embedded itself into it, puncturing the wall and leaving a nice gash beside my bed. I immediately calmed down from my anger, laughing at the sheer luck I had to pull something like that off. I called it luck then, but I didn't realize that it was really sick misfortune. I at first thought about covering it up with something like a poster, as it was right beside my bed, but decided I'd leave it as it is, as a warning of what could happen next time I got mad. Suffice to say, that was a bad decision. It was winter now, and with that the rodents like the squirrels and birds would no longer bother me at night. Finally, I could get some much needed rest. As my head hit the pillow and the house went quiet, my bliss turned to a newfound annoyance as the scratching above and beside me continued. Those fucking animals, I muttered to myself. I figured they had found a way into our attic for the winter. I made a note to tell the landlord later. Then, a sharp chill went up my spine as I heard whispering. This was nothing new, except I could make out what was being said now. Burn, char, singe, scorch. The voice was cold. That's the only way I could describe it. 
It chilled me to the bone. No amount of blankets or heat could keep me warm once that sound hit my eardrum. Abruptly, I sat up. I was angry that Matt had interrupted my sleep as I had class in the morning. I decided to go next door and tell him to keep it down so I could sleep. I shuffled groggily across the hall and slowly opened his door. My mouth was half open, about to tell him to shut up, when my heart sank. He was asleep. Slowly, I backed out towards my room and sat back on my bed. Tentatively, I turned on my bedside light and edged myself closer to the hole in the wall, trying to get a good look inside. I nearly jumped when I saw a cold, blue eye staring right back at me. I ran down to the basement as fast as I could. I'm there writing this post now. I think I'll sleep down here tonight. I know what I saw, but I don't know if anyone in the house would believe me. Tomorrow, I'm going to go upstairs and try to cover up the hole. Maybe it'll help.